What's happening, everybody? Welcome to this Industry Devs uh, little news roundup we got going on for today. I'm Jack Vinny, being joined by my producer, Anna Grum. This is not going to be my stick, I swear. <laughs> Too <laughs> late now. That's the last time. That's the last Too late. Time no, it can't be the last time. It's got to go forever. Got to go forever. We got <laughs> some stuff to yeah. <laughs> we got some stuff to talk about today. Uh, Windows and Linux. We're gonna be we're gonna be chatting about that in terms of gaming. But before we do, be sure to head over to industrydevs.com. Join the Discord, uh, especially if you're a developer. Join the Discord. We got a lot of devs over there. And if you're not a developer, join the Discord anyway. It's a really fun place to talk and hang out with people. Uh, also, don't forget to follow us on YouTube and X at um, Industry Devs. And uh, don't forget about our podcast, which is on Spotify, Apple, YouTube, and also on X natively as well. So let's get right into this discussion from PC games. And this is a, the article is a couple weeks old, but uh, I thought it was interesting. Um, Windows 11 needs to change or it will lose PC gaming to Linux forever. We can only hope. Uh, <laughs> gamers don't love Windows 11, but they do love the Steam Deck. And a shift from Windows 10 to Linux finally looks realistic as a result. So this starts out by talking about a bad Windows update launched this week, which stopped several Ubisoft games, including the recent Star Wars Outlaws, which nobody's playing from working. <laughs> I added that in there. So a one-off unseen the error. People. Yeah. I wonder if they, they should just probably get DM'd on Twitter and then, hey, your game's broke. Um, a one-off unseen error that no one could have predicted, probably, but to me, points to a bigger problem that Microsoft has to face. I'm so sorry. And your phone again. I we're know. not cutting it. We're not cutting this one out this time. Okay. Yeah, no, this is all me. <clears throat> all right, we're gonna we're, I'm gonna I'm gonna zoom that one in. Anyway. But this is probably not to me. It points to a bigger problem that Microsoft has to face. Gamers are fickle, and Microsoft dominance over the gaming PC market is beginning to look shaky. Thanks to Linux Gaming on the Steam Deck. Uh, I will say that. So there have been several buggy updates, at least that I've ex personally experienced. I've, I've had to do a complete fresh uh, reinstalls of Windows twice in one year uh, with mine, Windows 11. Yeah, mine wasn't so extreme, but God, I've had them. I've had Windows updates break my computer multiple times. I think it's the way they, they do all their update testing. I remember I was watching uh, a YouTuber. Oh my gosh, what's his name now? Uh, Bern, Bern, nerd, nerd Bernard? I forgot what his name is. Anyway, uh, he used to work at Microsoft. I, I think everybody knows this now too, that Microsoft does most of their testing for Windows and virtual machines rather than on actual hardware. So hardware compatibility has dropped you know, considerably um, in terms of bugs and issues. Um, I've had my own issues. I've always been using Linux forever as a main, but I've always dual booted. But it was after uh, Windows 11 that I finally decided to just blow out Windows completely from my hard drive and I never went back to it. Um, I keep a VM of Windows just to configure things like some mouse software and stuff, uh, just to do pass through for USB peripherals. And that's about it. I mean, I, but I can't blame you. <laughs> yeah. I had, uh, there was an, uh, one of the updates I had, um, in both cases, it essentially bricked my system on Windows 11. One of them, uh, Right after the update and on reboot, it just like pegged my CPU at idle at like 40% while it was doing nothing. And the entire desktop was unusable. The mouse wouldn't interact with anything. So the Explorer was completely broken and I can only interact with a PC mm. using my keyboard. Um, so I had to do a fresh install from there because no matter what I did, I couldn't fix it. I couldn't roll back because it just wasn't allowing me to roll back for whatever reason. And that was horrible. Then six months later, I had another issue which made the computer completely unusable. That's like, you know what? I'm done. Windows is going to be in a VM now. Screw it. I use, I use Linux anyway. <laughs> It's the last straw. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Man, it's just been so horrible. Um, the article continues. I don't believe Microsoft has an agenda against gamers. Quite the contrary. It has vested interest in keeping them on its side. It has plowed billions into the hefty acquisitions to bolster the Xbox gaming division's roster. And it no doubt wants to recoup the healthy return on those investments. Right now, it has luck on its side, too, with the best gaming PCs running Windows 11 without a legitimate alternative available. I call BS on that, which I'm sure that hopefully the article will as well. It says, yes, uh, uh, that could change. However, Linux isn't quite ready as full-scale gaming alternative, but it certainly has wind in its sails for the first time in years, thanks mostly to the new gaming handhelds, such as the Steam Deck. Um, I will say, as a Linux enjoyer and primary Linux user, uh, it has a whole lot of wind in its sails. It's not perfect. There's some mm -hmm. things on it that, that aren't perfect, but I would honestly say it's like 95% of the way there. Most games run on par. Um, some, there's like maybe like a 5% deviance in frame rates. Some games run better, like considerably better under Linux than they do uh, on Windows. Um, but, you know, a few frames here and there isn't that big of a, isn't that big of a deal to me. Especially if you get, if you could push a lot of frames anyway, it's not going to be that big of a deal. Um, 
but I really haven't had any issues with um, gaming on Linux whatsoever. There's a few games that don't work, like Path of Exile 2 that just uh, launched in early access day one. It just worked right out of the box on Linux. That's no issues, which I thought was nice. Well, and a lot um, of other games are starting to uh, to open up to being Linux compatible, aren't they? Yeah, I think a lot of them are. I think a lot of them are also trying to shoot to make sure that they could be compatible with the Steam Deck and, and mm -hmm. by extension to that, uh, just Linux systems. Uh, it's one of the things I always thought was interesting, too, is um, how Steam Deck actually helped boost that. So if you take a look at this is a breakdown of Steam users by operating system. Linux is at 2.03 percent. So they're slowly climbing up there. Um, they're beating out OS. Uh, they're beating out Mac OS by 0.6 percent, which is nice. Uh, but Linux right now actually has overall desktop market share of 4.5 percent. Mm -hmm. uh, top distributions are Arch, Ubuntu, Mint, which is what I use, Mint 22, nice. Uh, Ubuntu, Manjaro Linux is another good one, and Debian. I'm surprised Cache is not on here, but I don't think people, a lot of whole lot of people use Cache OS. Not yet, at least. That's um, people are putting that through its paces. Yeah, that's been catching a lot of steam, uh, steam lately, which is good. But um, back to the article, it says Proton's Valve, uh, Proton Valve's compatibility layer for running Windows games on Linux has completely changed how we look at Linux gaming. As a result, here at PC Games and Games and Games and <laughs> we yeah, whatever we now yeah we now actively look at whether major games run on the Steam Deck and as a result work on Linux with our Steam Deck compatibility guides. I think it's a good thing. Mm -hmm. I think it's a good thing that uh, gaming outlets will will see if it runs on Linux, particularly the Steam Deck. Um, I think it's very very good, just because I'm you know as a Linux enjoyer and everyone else should use Linux. Uh, I think it's going to be very very important with especially not just in terms of like the bugginess of where Windows is, in terms of like updates, but just where the whole Windows e ecosystem is, yeah, and where it's going, it's um, becoming increasingly more locked down to do anything. Um, I know we were talking earlier before the video. If you want to share your story about uh, uh, updates, running it improv, you know, bad times. Oh, yeah, you know, you you have an encode going, and they just decide, even though you've explicitly said, "I do not want you to automatically update the background," they do it anyway. Yeah, they, I know a lot of people that have Microsoft lost work. Microsoft just doesn't care. No, they don't. Not at all. Yeah, with, with Linux, it's like, oh, you want to update ever? That's fine. Just do whatever you want. You want to delete the kernel? Go for it. <laughs> just if do I whatever you want. If I don't want to update my machine, what's it to them? Yeah. Um, well, they think they know better than you. That's why. They know best. You're 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 too stupid to know how to use a computer. Mm. Um, but I guess, I mean, Seeing as how many people do screw their computers up in terms of like downloading stuff, they kind of do have a point. But at the same time, um, I don't think really like constantly breaking things with the system and locking you out of basic features like postponing an update. I don't think that's going to really harm yeah. a lot of people. Most well, and that's not to say anything about when their updates are the things that break the machine in the first place. Yeah, that's another awful thing. I think most people's internet uh, problems, not internet, most people's problems with their computers that stem from any kind of malware or anything like that. It's just basic internet literacy 101. Don't click on bad links. Yeah. Don't go to shady websites. Don't download stuff if you don't know where it's from. And yeah. like, that's it. And you always use an ad blocker. Actually use Brave. Use Brave browser, folks. Built Brave an ad blocker. Brave is great. Um, yeah, the, I mean, just basic computer and internet literacy 101. That's, that's where, that, that is where 99.9% .9 of people's problems come from. Don't click on licks. Don't open attachments from people you don't know. Mm -hmm. Instead of doing like all the all the crazy, you know, like in in grade school and stuff, I get like all the, the, the drug education. They should teach people computer literacy. Like don't click on bad links. Mm -hmm. well, I dare you not to click on bad it's links. It's especially <laughs> funny because it's like people that I would, I, don't, I guess, just assume were computer literate. I think I always figure if people have found their way onto Discord, there's some literacy there. Mm -hmm. But the amount of people I've seen get their accounts, you know, like hacked and things like that, make me think that I actually, you know, like two factor authentication, maybe it's not that popular of an option that, that so many people don't use it. Yeah, people should be using 2FA all the time. Mm -hmm. Also, like Everything. even like if you ever browse YouTube, like if you're looking for anything, especially like video game related, um, you're always going to come across something that's like, oh, you know, free download here, this, that, and the other. Here's a crack for the game or, or exploit for the game or whatever. It really happened to me the other day in a, like a small private Discord. Somebody posted in every single channel a link to like a, a free game or something like that. Oh, yeah, please. Like, no. 
Uh, <laughs> the article continues right now. I'm not saying it's time to ditch Windows and switch to Linux, but the idea isn't as outlandish as it might have seemed five years ago. Very true. Thanks to Valve's efforts, mainstream Linux gaming is viable. I believe so. Like like I said, I, I don't, uh, you know, I, that's all I have on this computer is Linux and Windows in a VM. I don't play games in a VM at all. Um, yeah, I don't, I don't miss anything. You know, there, there's, there's going to be, I think by, by year's end, it's, it's going to hit, I think, 18,000 games released on Steam. You're not going to be starved for games that can't work on Linux. You know, yeah. the only ones that I can think of are stuff with anti-cheat. I guess if you're into those type of games that have like heavy kernel level anti-cheat, uh, anti-cheat, sure. Um, but at the same time, if, I mean, I don't want that on my computer anyway, mm -hmm. because most of that stuff, it's difficult to uninstall it once when it is installed on your computer and yeah. nobody should give nobody should ever give a video game kernel level access to the computer anyway that's the dumbest thing ever like people are whatever computer literacy um but yeah no i, I really don't have any issues running anything uh on my computer on linux like I even even like individual launchers i could run those like the battle.net launcher i could run that through um what do i use i think i use lutris mm -hmm. for that heroic games launcher that works with a whole bunch of different stuff like you can download and install games directly from gog through that through the epic game store um the amazon games market too like you could use the heroic games launcher for that um install different versions of proton there's glorious egg from proton um to help improve compatibility with some games there's just so much um it's not obviously as plug and play as windows is but i would say that windows issues that i've had to deal with in the past are worse than any video game troubleshooting issues that i've had trying to get a game to run under, under linux because most of them like i said like 95 percent of them yeah. work just right out of the box there's a couple that you do have to do some tweaks for to get running and those are always easier than dealing with the headaches from windows just in in my personal opinion like i lose less time and time is important to people these days i would just like to see some actual competition for microsoft yeah it's it's been a long time coming and so it, it'd be nice to see somebody be able to step up and take them on <laughs> I think if um, Valve releases their OS for PCs as well, I think that that'll go a very, very long way. I think that's what a lot of people oh, are waiting yeah. for too, because people, when they start looking into Linux, they're like, oh my gosh, look at all these distributions. You get Ubuntu, you got Mint, you got Arch, Manjaro, Cache OS. Like what is a good Nobara? You got, what is a good distro for gaming? And they're all different. Um, and they'll suit different like user experiences and, and needs for the individual. Um, but if Valve could do it and, and be gaming focused, I think they'll do it correctly because I think they did, they did it right with uh, Steam Deck. I think they yeah. picked the right version of Linux. Um, they're using Arch. It was Ubuntu before, but they said they get they, a lot more flexibility with Arch, obviously. So they're using Arch. Um, obviously, Arch has more up-to-date kernels and stuff like that too, which is going to have all your up-to-date drivers, especially if you're Team Red. I need to use AMD. But getting past all that, yeah, I don't. I, where Microsoft is headed right now, it's just a big lockbox to me. Um, yeah, the, 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 the software is way too locked down. It's becoming too closed off. Uh, and I think the future is definitely going to be Linux when it comes to gaming. That's just my personal opinion. It's not just because I'm a Linux enjoyer and I think everybody should use Linux. It's just because I do think it's an amazing operating system. It's the way I describe Linux is basically like you removed a padlock off of your hardware. I That's think maybe once we see like more, um, I guess I probably Gen Z, I would say, you know, they're they're raised up using technology now. So maybe, you know, that when you're that familiar with technology, you'd be more willing to experiment. I think a lot of, you know, a lot of people that are probably so ingrained with using Microsoft, it'd be very difficult for them to even you know, think about moving away from it. Yeah. Um, I know for a lot of people, it's very, very difficult to try to get away from. But at the same time, a lot of people do move from Windows and they go to Mac OS. So yeah. if they could do that, then they can, I think they can make the move to Linux. There's a lot of Linux distributions that are very just easy to use right out of the box that aren't confusing at all. So when that's I, a big plus today than compared to even five years yeah. ago. Yeah, well, and I definitely think we're more likely to see it in the private sector than like in the business world. Business is so entrenched in Microsoft products at this point. I don't know that that's ever gonna change yeah, there are, I mean, there are open source solutions that are really good, but not as tightly integrated as all of Microsoft's Office Suite that all the corpos use. Yeah. Um, you can get close, but it's not going to be, even though there's still some hiccups with what they have, but nothing on the open source front is going to be as integrated as that. But yeah, I think I th hopefully Windows is is on the way out. And, and I don't think it'll ever be the year of Linux, but I think the more people use Linux, like if we could just get the desktop market share like over 10%, yeah. That would be huge. That would be amazing, I think. Start pushing those Linux videos. Yeah, I know. I got to start doing that. 
That's right. Hey guys, it's, it's time to use Linux. Hey, Linux. you know, you could do some some fancy like how tos and give people the confidence they need to you know move from Microsoft into Linux. Yeah, I mean, it, it, the bottom line is it's all really easy stuff. Like people don't need to worry about terminals anymore if they don't want to. That that, that scared a lot of people when they think they got to dive into a terminal constantly, but you really don't. Um, occasionally you may have to, but like it's not that big of a deal really. It's yeah. just typing text and hitting enter. Like if you could move a mouse and click it and you understand what you're clicking, then you know you gotta understand how to type words and hit enter. That's about it. But I think we're gonna wrap it up here for this episode. Guys, thanks so much for hanging out. I really appreciate it. Uh don't forget to check out industrydevs.com. Join the Discord if you're a developer. If you're not a developer, join it anyway. Come hang out, talk to us. We're a pretty fun bunch. Especially me, I'm the funnest guy around. All, the all funnest. <laughs> absolutely funnest. Anyway, guys, thanks for hanging out. Uh really appreciate it. I'm Jack Vania. Anagram. And uh, we'll catch you guys next time. Peace. See ya.